Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's another beautiful Indian summer, autumn or fall afternoon, and I'm back in the bush. One thing I get asked quite a lot is what are the basic things you need to take into the bush with you? Your absolute basic requirements. Now, this is a very difficult question to ask, answer because your outdoorsmanship or outdoors womanship all depends on your skill level, your experience, the amount of time you've actually spent in the bush, what you've done there. The more you know, the less you need to bring. If you're just starting out, you know, you need basically enough equipment to survive 48 hours including a tent or a bivy bag, a sleeping bag, some way of cooking, some food, some either some drink or some means of getting drink or purifying drink, an axe, maybe a saw, and possibly even some uh, signaling equipment in case you get really lost and you need to be rescued. A mobile phone, if you actually get a signal, will help a lot. But what if you've got a little bit more experience than that and you just want to spend a few hours out in the bush? Well, over the years I've sort of refined what I need down to just a handful of objects. Obviously this changes depending on why I'm actually going into the bush. For example, quite often I'll take a folding saw um, or even a hatchet, depending on what I need to do. If I'm sleeping out, I'll take a hammock or a bivy bag, a sleeping bag, and some means of boiling water or cooking, a pan. Or, uh, a kettle, this sort of thing. But if I'm just coming out into the bush, generally I take a knife, and this season I'm playing around with this cheap Camp Go bush knife. As I showed in the, the Strange Theories Part 1 video, it also functions vaguely as a saw, which most sawback knives don't. So if I'm out for a few hours, I don't really need much more than that. I'm not building a big structure. If I need a walking stick, I spend five minutes sweating and wheezing, and I manage to cut myself a twig. But it's the knife that's important. Now, I'm not going to go into brands of which brand knife I recommend to take into the bush because I don't get paid for doing so. When companies start paying me to recommend their, their tools, then I'll be happy to name drop. But from personal experience, I have a rule that I never take anything into the bush that it would hurt me to lose or to break which basically restricts all tools, clothes, all equipment to pretty damn cheap. Knives get lost, it's a sad fact. It's one reason you should always double up, maybe keep a pen knife on you as well. Knives get broken. Doesn't matter how expensive the knife is, it will still get lost or broken under certain circumstances especially if you're using it at night. Right, the second thing I would take is a means of lighting fire. In this case, just uh, 
a cheap lighter, a cheap disposable lighter, which I know beforehand will function. Now, many in the bushcraft and outdoors world will say you need some form of fire striker and magnesium fire rod and things like this. I do actually carry a spur on my wrist, this cheap Chinese paracord and fire strike bracelet. It is a pain in the ass to use. It really, really is, but it is there if there's an emergency. I personally prefer to use a disposable lighter, even carry some paper or cotton wool or something in my pocket to get a fire going. Doesn't sound very bushcrafty, but trust me, when it's pissing down with rain, it's windy, it's dark, you're wet, you're cold, it's miserable, you don't want to be messing around doing this for three hours with a bird's nest. You should know that skill, don't get me wrong, but if there is an easier option available, then use it. Another thing I take with me is a small bag. And a small bag is very useful because while you're going around you may be picking up things. It sounds obvious, but if you don't have a bag, you'll very quickly realize you need one. Whether this is, you know, picking up kindling for, or fire starting material, whether it's foraging, a bag is extremely useful. Another thing I take with me is a drink. In this case, so a small plastic bottle filled with a kofola, which is the Slovak version of cola, sort of like dandelion and burdock cola. It's a strange drink, takes a lot, a lot of time to get used to, but I like it. It's sugary and it's got caffeine in it. two of my main dietary requirements. Food. Sometimes I will take a chocolate bar with me or something similar in case I start getting a, a sugar drop. I've just eaten a while ago, a couple of hours ago, so I'm not going to need to eat for quite a long time now. A watch. A watch can be extremely useful for telling cardinal directions, compass points. But if you're in a forest, not that much. I like having a watch because it basically lets me know within the forest what time the sun will start coming down because I know the area. I know what time it will start coming down behind the hills and above the tree line. <coughs> Old forests, dense forests, get dark really quickly. Like, really, really quickly. Once the sun goes behind the hills, they start getting very, very dark. And it's easy to get lost if you don't know what you're doing. Always keep an eye on the time when you're wandering around the bush. If you're out in uh, open fields or deserts, somewhere, you know, ice, ice flows, one good way of following the time, well, the time until sundown, is the old Australian Aboriginal technique, which is something I do use very, very regularly. And this basically involves having the horizon and the location of the sun. And underneath the sun, you put your hand like this. You basically close one eye and look here where the sun is. Here's the horizon. And you count how many fingers down to the horizon. 
One hand is generally one hour, with each finger being 15 minutes. And you can count down how long it will take before the sun sets. And this is extremely, extremely useful. You know you've got roughly one and a half hours and you can start making decisions. Are you camping down for the night? Do you plan to get home and, you know, you've got a five mile hike to do? Just quickly look at the sun, put your hand underneath it and count down the hands or the fingers to the horizon. This is an ancient, ancient timekeeping uh, method. And it can save your life because, for example, in the Carpathian Mountains, where I am, the forests are not level. It's all steep banks down to streams, twisting, there's trees, there's roots, and most of the terrain is very, very uneven. It would be very easy here to slip and break your ankle, and you know, your day has just taken a quite a large turn for the worse. This happens when it starts getting dark and you start panicking, especially when the animals start getting louder and louder as sunset comes, especially at the moment because we have a ruya, the red deer stag rut. throughout the valley all all night so these are my basic suggestions for you know what I carry out into the bush obviously just for short jaunts not for long term base your own equipment on these simple items remember any clothes you're wearing should either be old or hard wearing. They're going to get ripped. Don't wear expensive stuff in the forest. Boots. I always wear boots in the forest because I don't want to think where my feet are stepping. I don't want to have to worry continuously about something going through the sole of my foot, which is very, very easy to do. Yes, it's more, you know, with nature to walk around barefoot but just try it sometime in a forest and you'll be crying within 20 minutes a good pair of boots preferably at least mid-size or higher so they support your ankle anyway hopefully this has given you some ideas on doing your own little expeditions let me know in the comments please what you take to the bush and we can compare notes as always please subscribe to my channel watch my videos like them and be free <laughs>